The shape of the On Athletic shoe is unique. It can't be mistaken for any other brand. This is a cloud. It's the key to unlocking your running potential. And uh, if you look at it, it, it truly stands out. The structure of On's C-suite is just as distinctive, starting at the top with a pair of CEOs. What we realized very early on is if you're adding different capabilities to each other and, and you do that as equals, then this leads to, to better outcomes. Mark Maurer joined On as Chief Operating Officer in March 2013. Martin Hoffman arrived as CFO that July. In 2021, they jointly assumed the CEO role. We are a brand that needs to be excellent in, in designing product, in innovating product, but also in shipping millions of parcels from A to B in the most efficient way. So we need to have very different mindsets and, and very diverse people. Mark has different strengths, I have different strengths. Um, and if you take us together, you just get more. Have you had, uh, have there been areas of, of, of the business where you've had disagreements? As co-CEOs, have you always been of one mind or have you wanted to take things in different directions? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think it's, that's a strength that we're basically able to problem solve and also disagree on topics. I think what we, what we have with each other is just a lot of trust. Sometimes we really argue in a meeting with a lot of other people present um, so they actually see it's part of our culture. We're also spending a lot of time outside of work together and uh, that, that really helps to purely talk about uh, the this, this, this things that, that, that matters and in the end we both want to do the same, right? We want to build a, a, a company for the future and, and so that goal is, is what unites us. Companies with co-CEOs are rare, but ON's configuration is even more unusual. Martin Hoffman also holds the CFO position. He says his two jobs complement each other. I actually feel the CFO makes you a better CEO and the CEO makes you a better CFO. Understanding what you build as a CEO helps you to understand your numbers and understanding the numbers helps you what are the right things to build. On's emphasis on mind share as much as market share has driven a decade of explosive growth. Hoffman has On's finances in focus, but he also sees himself as the steward of a story. In the end, there is a strong psychology behind numbers. And you can make a lot happen with numbers and the way you communicate and you speak about numbers. So they can be very motivating, they can be demotivating, they can keep a lot of pressures away from the company or they can put a lot of pressure on the company. Actually, within the company, we're not talking so much about financials. When you talk to highly creative people, they don't want to hear you talk about the numbers all the time. They want to hear you talk about as a, as a leader, as a human, as someone who also loves the product. And I also see this as, as my job of uh, giving a, a clear, consistent story to the outside world but then at the same time having a, a story that is actually building our culture internally. On has come a long distance in a short time. It was launched in 2010 by a trio of Swiss founders, including a former World Ironman champion. It caught on quickly as a brand for serious runners. By 2014, the company had reached $10 million in revenue and began to sell in the United States. From there, On picked up the pace, developing new footwear lines and diversifying into apparel. Swiss tennis legend Roger Federer took notice. He became an investor and consultant with his name on the company's first line of tennis shoes. The 2020 COVID pandemic sparked a boom in outdoor recreation, sending ONS sales soaring. They set the stage for a listing on the New York Stock Exchange in September 2021. The athletic industry has always been one of the best industries within retail. That only got better during COVID. The barriers to entry for newer brands and disruptor brands are lower than ever. What we're seeing from some of the newer players is just more innovation. I think that we're seeing it's a good time for some of these brands to grow. With just over a billion dollars in sales last year, On's a relatively small player in a crowded category. 
Still, going public has made a difference. I think it made us a better company, so it challenged us. And, you know, we decided to play in the Champions League. We decided we wanted that scrutiny. It brought huge opportunities, obviously, in terms of brand awareness as well. Wall Street is certainly aware of ON, and investors seem to like what they see. We want to build a company that is, that is here to stay. This positive emotion of, of growing, but growing in a meaningful way. Um, from social impact, sustainability, how your product's resonating with your customers. That's, that's very important and, and setting up that framework is, is basically a, a core of, of my work. It sounds like you have to take shareholder demands and sort of translate them into something that's going to be motivating for the people who work for you. Is that how it works? Yeah, definitely. The number is never the goal. Um, and the growth should allow us to, to do that in a sustainable way. And so can growth sometimes be too fast? Yes, it can. For us, it's important that we're kind of bringing that exponential and huge growth of over 60% year over year slowly down into what we call a more durable growth going, going forward over the next years. On is setting its pace for a marathon, not a sprint. It's confident in the strength of its technology, the cloud tech cushioning system invented and patented by its founders. In many ways, ON likes to identify as a tech company. We create products, we create a brand, but everything else that we do is, is actually technology and data. So from product development, uh, supply chain, to customer interaction, to, to our own e-com environment, you really have the, the analytical depths and the complexity of a, of a tech company but at the same time, you have the emotional highs of a, of a consumer brand. And I actually think this is a really nice combination. Whatever else it is, ON is a premium brand. That's had an impact on its sales strategy. Direct-to-consumer channels have been bolstered by the opening of flagship stores around the world. And while wholesale revenue remains robust, the company's taking a selective approach to distribution. Have you had to say no to some partnerships? How do you think about the wholesale now? We're trying to allocate resources to where it has the biggest impact. And with that comes, comes a lot of saying no. We're working with the partners that are reaching the communities that we want to reach. And so this has led to the distribution that we have, which very much started with front specialty accounts like Fleet Fit in the US but then evolved into you know, more general sporting goods, but then also accounts that are reaching an even younger audience like JD um, or, or, or Foot Locker. We are rooted in running, we are rooted in performance, and there's still a lot of uh, room that to, for us to, to grow, a lot of market share to gain. At the same time, it gives you, it gives you credibility that then the shoes are also worn in, a, in an everyday environment. As ON moves beyond its performance running niche to become an everyday footwear choice, the company's betting that apparel will broaden its reach in similar fashion. Why did the move into apparel come? The mission is that, that you move and you enjoy moving, and apparel is an important part of that. It's growing, it's still relatively small, but we feel it will be an important part of the, of the future business. Apparel, we, we want to grow it over proportionally. Percentage, you know, what it is in percentage is actually not so important for us. For us, it's important that we're building it in a premium way and it's a multi-year journey. Another area with upside for ON is tennis. For us, tennis has, has two elements, right? I think one is we, it's a huge opportunity from a brand awareness perspective beyond tennis, just how can we showcase on as a sportswear company? And then we feel there's an opportunity to make tennis more inclusive. In many countries, it's still a very exclusive sport. So how can we bring it to the masses and how can the tennis um, look be transponded to an everyday look? And that's definitely a big opportunity. ON has already established a strong presence globally and it has plans to enlarge that footprint. When you start a company in Switzerland, the first thing you need to do is really leaving the country. So we actually build a global company right from the beginning. We still have significant room to grow in parts of Europe. We are quite strong in, in Japan already. We just started in Latin America big market. China, of course, a big focus for us in the, in the next years. China is a country that everyone wants to be in, but you have to do it right. right? You actually have to put significant investment forth to actually get it right. If you kind of take a halfway strategy, you're not going to be successful there. Historically, China has been both a great opportunity to drive revenues, but critically, it's also been better margin. People will pay more for the same good abroad, and therefore, China has been not just the avenue of growth, it's been the best avenue of growth. The questions of whether that is tapering now 
are centered around whether that's structural or is it cyclical. What does the path to success in China look like now? Is it, is it sort of back to some situation like normal? How does it feel in China? Right now in China, it feels like we're still a very small brand with a lot of potential. There's a lot of macroeconomic uncertainty. We feel we're still so small as a brand that the macroeconomic element is a bit less important because we have so much room to, to you know, just grow market share. We're really at the point where I think we've proven product market fit and now it's about scaling it. Back in 2019, there were about 15 people working in China. Today, it's a team of 150. There is not really a wholesale partnership network in China. So it's all about building our own stores, our own monobrand destinations. And this will take time, but it's a, it's a great thing to have so we can really engineer the growth over the next uh, years. Coming up, it's part museum, part laboratory, and all about the ON experience. Martin Hoffman takes me on a tour of an ON flagship store. The brand stands for performance and design, and this should be reflected in the, in the store as well. This is Bloomberg. As CFO and co-CEO of the Swiss footwear and apparel company ON, Martin Hoffman has the kind of job that keeps him on his toes. His professional path has taken some unconventional turns. I am an engineer from background, so I hold an engineer in computer science and business management, so not really a, a finance background. Then I ended up in consulting and I worked with many amazing CFOs all around the world of, of bigger and smaller companies. And I think this ignited my love for that, for that job and that role. Um, and then I transitioned into a CFO role myself at a retail company here in Switzerland. That's where I connected with Mark. I asked him how he acquired CFO skills without formal training in finance and accounting. First, you need to have a love for math, and that's also the same in, in computer science, so it's the same background. I think you need to lift the values of a CFO, uh, which, is, which is very important, and I, I think I, I, I do this and, and try to be really a role model in this as well. And last but not least, it's, it's, it's understanding the psychology of the numbers, and this is something that I learned from working with so many different uh, great CFOs all around the world. For Hoffman and co-CEO Mark Maurer, building ON's business will be a mix of science and art. The two principles meet in ON's growing portfolio of retail stores across the US, Europe and Asia. Stores are magical. So much of the storytelling, sure, is commercials or being targeted by your social media account. But the best way to tell that story is to show that product in an environment that you control. Flagships have to be thought of not just as stores, but also as marketing vehicles. So you have to think about what it does in terms of new customer acquisition, what it does in terms of the halo that we often see when a flagship opens in a market, all of a sudden the e-commerce business gets a big lift. ON has opened stores in some of the world's trendiest shopping areas, Regent Street in London, NoHo in New York, Tokyo's fashionable Harajuku district. Martin Hoffman showed me around the store located below ON's global headquarters in Zurich. Well, it's super important for us that uh that the, the, the store really screams the premiumness of the brand. And so the brand stands for performance and design, and this should be reflected in the, in the store as well. And then we want to connect to the local communities as well. So many of our stores have space in there where you can actually meet for a run. Each outlet also offers opportunities for consumers to learn about ON's history and its constantly evolving technology. In a traditional running shoe, you only have the material that you can play with. You can make the foam softer, you can make the foam harder. And we came up with a technology where you also have an engineering part in it, so a real technology part. The idea is always the same. So you have a soft landing and a firm push-off. So the soft landing is generated by the elements collapsing when you land and then they become firm, and so you have this nice push-off when you, when you basically need the speed. Alongside technology that boosts performance, there's innovation that advances sustainability. Cyclon, ON's circular product subscription program, centers on recyclable shoes and apparel made from castor beans and castor oil. Out of the castor bean, we generate an oil, and out of the oil, we basically generate pellets. And from the pellets, we can make the outsole of the shoe, but we also make yarn for the upper. 
So the whole shoe is basically the same material out of that bean. And the advantage is that this product can be fully recycled. And because we felt this is a product that you shouldn't own, you can only subscribe for it. So you can only rent it, and only when you send your old product back, you get a new product. This sounds like good business because you, with a subscription model, you get loyalty from your customers. How do the financials work around that kind of product? Yeah, so for us, the most important thing is that the product comes back, so that really the customer engages in that circularity. And of course, it gives us a nice interaction with the customer at that important moment of, of repurchasing and also offering more products that we have in, in, that, in that program. At the moment, it's still a pilot phase, um, but we already have 30,000 subscribers, so it's, it's growing quickly. ON's workforce is growing quickly as well. For Hoffman, it's a challenge to scale up while preserving the culture of a startup. We invest a lot in, in the offices that you feel home, that you can actually be at your best yourself, and people work very differently. We take a lot of uh, input from the sports world, actually, the athlete spirit, right? Uh, building a sports team that can perform at the best, um, but also talking a lot about the explorer spirit. How can we really tap into new things, continue being disruptive? And on has been spreading that spirit across the world. We have a big office in, in Portland, in Shanghai, uh, in Berlin, Sao Paulo, Melbourne. And we have 80 different nationalities at on. It's very important to have a diverse team because we have a very diverse landscape of, of customers. And in order to understand that, it's important to have all the different backgrounds, mindsets here in the, in the team as well. Do you find it difficult in some markets to find enough of the right people? Well, we are very fortunate. We got 40,000 applications last year for 400 hires, so we can be very selective and really build a high-performing team. Coming up, how a world-class company develops partnerships with world-class athletes. It's very exciting. You can help me. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. And on gears up for the Paris Olympics, an opportunity to shine on sport's biggest stage. You see on competing at the highest level, really winning there, and this gives the brand credibility. This is Bloomberg. The Swiss footwear and apparel firm ON began with an athlete's imagination. Retired world champion Ironman Olivier Bernhard dreamed up the prototype for a revolutionary new running shoe. A decade later, another Swiss athletic champion entered ON's orbit, Roger Federer, winner of 20 Grand Slam tennis titles. He joined the company as an investor and an entrepreneur, bringing much more than his name to the relationship. We're very lucky that, that he loves to engage, especially on the product, and I think this is also where, with his expertise and his cultural understanding of tennis, where he can add a lot of value. It's, it's great to also have with him, you know, very strategic discussions around, for example, how, how do we want to, you know, shape tennis as part of on and, and what should be our overall strategy. Sports endorsements and celebrity partnerships can have a major impact on credibility and boost market share. They can also backfire disastrously, as with the ugly controversies that led Adidas to end its relationship with Kanye West. Tying yourself to a celebrity can certainly be a driver of brand awareness, but it can also be a liability, and you have to be really careful. You find the right person to rep your brand at the right time, and there is nothing better. You find the right person to rep your brand at the wrong time, and you're in trouble. You find the wrong person at the wrong time, <laughs> throw your hands up in the air. ON's leadership team takes the process of recruiting and working with its brand representatives very seriously. I think it's, it's a lot about the conversations that you need to have before you actually engage. With Roger, it was, was great. So when uh, that all started, uh, he was here in the lab and uh, afterwards we went out for, for dinner. So we really had a lot of time to get to know each other and uh, similar to hiring a new team member. We can never rely from a profitability perspective or from a revenue perspective or growth per perspective just on one athlete or area of business. We're trying to create a balanced portfolio that reaches into many different communities and that shows kind of who on is from all different aspects. So take Ben Shelton in tennis and Igor Swiatek in tennis, very different characters, but ultimately both are very, very strongly aligned with, with who we are. Ben Shelton's run to the semi-finals of the 2023 US Open brought on priceless exposure.
the upcoming Paris Olympics represent an even bigger opportunity. A very large luxury rail, LVMH, is sponsoring. We are guaranteed this is going to be a beautiful Olympics that becomes a spectacle around luxury, around spending. And so it's going to be a, an interesting branding exercise that we're going to see in a very unique way. Switzerland's delegation will once again wear on gear at the opening ceremony, and the company will put significant resources into every aspect of its Olympic participation. It's going to be an important Olympics for us because Paris is in the heart of Europe, it's in the heart of where we are. So we really want to be uh, present in Paris. We want to talk to the community there. We want to show up with innovation, with sustainability. A lot of the product developments that we're doing and how we're empowering um, and enabling athletes to win is going to come together around Paris. So that's a very, very important internal element and it's significantly helped us to, to accelerate product innovation. This will be the first Olympics where on truly is a global premium sportswear brand. And what kind of bump would you expect to see from the Olympics? Are you watching, are you waiting for this to have a noticeable impact on the numbers? Yeah, it's all about credibility. And so you see on, you see on competing at the highest level, really winning there. And this gives the brand credibility. I don't need the same shoe that the best runners in the world need, but I get really excited by being able to wear the same technology like the best runners. Over the last 10 years, Martin Hoffman has helped guide on from a scrappy $10 million upstart to a billion dollar publicly listed power player. I wanted to know what he sees coming in the next decade. What's the opportunity that excites you the most over the next five to 10 years for on? I think we have uh, so many opportunities to, to grow and it's so much fun to work in a growing environment, to work with emotional products, to work on a global scale. I mentioned going from running to tennis to outdoor, um, into training, from shoes to apparel. And, and we can continue that dream in many different dimensions and uh, that's what we do. I like to think there are not uh, challenges that keep you up at night, but are there things that over the next five to ten years you can see looming on the horizon that worry you about you know, challenges that the business will face? Yeah, for me, it's all about finding that right level of speed for the company to grow. Because if you grow too fast, then maybe it's over soon. And, and uh, I really want to maintain that positive pos positivity of growing, uh, but growing in a pro profitable way. So there are a lot of elements in there that are, that are super important for me and where my focus is. And at the same time, I think I talk more about culture today than I talk about numbers. How can we maintain the, the entrepreneurial spirit, the athlete spirit that we have in the company, even so um, we are growing and growing. If a friend called you tomorrow and said they've been promoted to CFO, maybe you have lots of friends who've been promoted to CFO and this is a, a, not a fictitious uh, question. What, what's the advice that you give somebody who's just been given this role, just given this responsibility? How should they handle it? So you will find yourself many times uh, spending hours and days and nights in diving into your Excel sheets, into your PowerPoint presentations, and then just an hour before you present that whole thing to, to someone, you figure out, well, I was thinking far too complex and no one will understand this, no one will be interested. So I actually go back, you write everything down in just a page or a few words. And, and I think that's in the end, essence what we do. We take some very uh, high level of complexity it make it easily digest, digestible for everyone. So I think that's one thing. Um, you will figure out there's a law of big numbers. So there are a lot of upsides and downsides, but luckily some of them offset each other. And uh, be forward looking. So actually to the, to the topic of uh, the future CFO, we call it Advanced Navigator. Um, so really looking forward, less backward. I'm Anna Edwards. This is Bloomberg.